Hello everyone, welcome to Scardia.com. This is Dr. Sana Khan and today we're going to discuss another important topic is about the ventral hernias. By ventral hernias, we mean the hernias of the anterior abdominal wall. In this lecture, we'll discuss about the umbilical and the paraumbilical hernias as umbilical hernias are more common in the children and the paraumbilical hernias, they are more common in the adults and especially in the female, females, uh, those who are obese and or th those who are pregnant, there's more chances to develop a paraumbilical hernia. Most of the time, the umbilical and the paraumbilical hernias, the defect is either in the umbilicus or the defect is in the linea alba. In case of children, this defect is closed early. But if the defect is not closed and the healing of the umbilical stump is uh, delayed, then there will be formation of the umbilical hernia. Most of the time, these hernias spontaneously regress by the age of the two years. But if they do not spontaneously regress by the age of two years, we have to go for the surgical repair. In this lecture, we will talk about umbilical and the paraumbilical hernia in detail. They're clinical features and obviously we'll talk about the treatment modalities or the surgical approaches for the umbilical and paramilical hernia. We'll also talk about the epigastric hernias and the epigastric hernias are more common in the adult male. Uh, age limit is between 25 and 40 years uh, and the epigastric hernia are in the ventral abdominal wall hernias which are extending from the xephoid process down to the level of the umbilicus. Most of the time the epigastric hernias contains fat but sometimes they can contain amentum or they can contain the intestines as well. We'll talk about the clinical features, presentation, and also the treatment modalities, surgical options for the epigastric hernia. In the detailed lecture, we'll also talk about the incisional hernia because in case of all the major surgeries involving the anterior abdominal wall, the most common complication is the incisional hernia. So we will also talk about the incisional hernias and we'll also talk about what precautionary measures should be adopted in case to avoid the recurrence of the uh, incisional hernias. We will also talk about the spigelian hernias, although these hernias are very much uh, rarer, but still, uh, since they are the part of the ventral abdominal hernias and mostly they are extending uh, from the spigelian fascia on the lateral border of the rectus muscle. So they are also a part of the differential diagnosis of the inguinal and the femoral hernias. So we'll also talk about the spigelian hernias in detail. We'll talk about the lumbar hernias, which are involving the inferior or the superior lumbar triangle. We'll talk about the clinical features, the differential diagnosis, like the lipoma, the cold abscess, and pseudo hernia in case of the lumbar hernias and what kind of the surgical options we have for the lumbar hernias. We'll also talk about the peristomal hernias. These peristomal hernias are very much common in those patients in which there's a colonic resection for a colonic tumor or uh, there is a leostomy bag. In 50% of the cases, there's herniation of other contents as well, which leads to the formation of the peristomal hernias. So in the lecture, we'll also talk about the peristomal hernias. Uh, traumatic hernias involving the anterior abdominal wall will also be discussed in the detailed lecture. And we will also talk about the rare external hernias, which include the sciatic hernias, the perianal hernias, the obturator hernias, and the gluteal hernias. Although these uh, are very, very rare, but still we're gonna talk a little bit about these rare external hernias as well. We'll also talk about another very important entity, which is the sportsman's hernia. And the sportsman's hernia is very much common in all those sportmen who are basically uh, performing or involved in the contact supports, maybe the uh, football or the rugby or all those uh, contact sports involved. So 
we'll talk about the spokesman hernias as well, the causes and etiology of the pain in the spokesman hernia, and what kind of the surgical options we really have available for the spokesman hernia. So there are other uh, lectures on scardia.com as well regarding the general surgery. You can always go there, get access, and you can uh, have access to the millions of lectures which, were, which are present on our website, that is scardia.com. So thank you for watching scardia.com. Keep watching, get, get access to watch complete lecture. Thank you very much.